Bonjour Year 11s, this is our new topic and our last whole topic we haven't done anything of in the last couple of years, which is environment and social issues. You should just have done an activity with Oak Academy for the first lesson on building the start of your vocabulary for environment. And then today's lesson with me, you're going to be looking at some environmental problems and then if we're higher tier using conditional to give solutions to those problems or if we're foundation using the il faut clause so either in your book or on online you can write chez moi lundi en janvier if you are writing in your book just make sure you take pictures for me to check your work and if you are writing at home uh, sorry online then um, just bear in mind you'll need to print everything to make sure you have it for a vision for whatever the assessments are going to look like. Okay, so let's begin. We're going to look first of all at les problèmes. So what are the problems? So normally in French, what is the word qu'est-ce que, or sometimes quoi? But remember, when we are asking something that has multiple possibilities, they say which are the problems, quels sont les problèmes? So what you want you to do is, even if some of these are the same from the previous hour's work, just making sure we really get these words because there are a lot of words that are non-cognates and I'm putting in some new vocabulary as well to build up our problems vocabulary. We we'll need to write down the French and the English and check your pronunciation with me to learn these. So global warming is le réchauffement de la planète. So we can see in the word there, the word chaud, hot, because we'll see if the heat planet gets too hot. Polar ice caps melt, sea levels will rise. So the heating up of the planet literally is how they say global warming. So let's practice that. Le réchauffement de la planète. So remember when we have an accent going up, it makes an A sound. And an accent coming down makes the A sound. Réchauffement planète. So make sure you pause to get every time, uh, the time you need on each one to write them down. Okay. Next, we have deforestation. So you can see in this word bois means wood. So we're D, we're taking it away. Le déboisement. Try that. Le déboisement. Super. Okay, next we have nuclear waste. So this word déchet comes up a lot. It is not a cognate and it is a word that is definitely often seen in, in exams, also in the uh, town topic, sometimes they bring it up, or even in school, talking about rubbish around school, it is a word commonly used in exams, okay? So, les déchets nucléaires, there's our cognate there, nuclear waste. Let's try that. Les déchets nucléaires. Okay, then we have extinction of species. So, in French, they call it la destruction d'espèces. So, species are very similar words there, espèce. And then destruction is spelt exactly the same. Let's check our pronunciation. So all shun words in English, remember in French, are sion, and they're all feminine. La destruction d'espèce. Okay, we have the destruction again. La destruction de la couche d'ozone. So of the ozone layer. So we've got several cognates here except for couche. You will have seen couche before in je me couche, I go to bed. Think of it as you go to bed, you're under a blanket and the ozone layer is like a blanket of gas around the earth that's being destroyed by harmful gases. So la destruction, try that. De la couche d'ozone. Super. Okay, nice and easy one. La pollution. Make sure we're not saying pollution, la pollution. And then we can afterwards say de, of. So it could be de l'air, de l'eau, de lumière, light pollution, and so on. Acid rain then is, we have our cognate here, but it's not pronounced acid, but acide. Anytime we have ui in French, like in the word yes, it is that we sound. So les pluies acides. Next we have this word here, pêche, means fishing. And we hopefully remember that sur means on or over. So la surpêche, overfishing. So where we have fished too much in certain areas and affected life cycles and so on. La surpêche. Next word there means drought. So in French, sec means dry. So altogether this is c, che, reste. 
la sécheresse. So that's drought, D-R-O-U-G-H-T. Hopefully we know how to spell the English though. Okay, next one. So we had overfishing, la surpêche. This is la surpopulation. Try that, la surpopulation. So this is overpopulation. So overcrowding of areas, countries not coping or areas not coping with the number of people. Okay, so we've seen now a list of problems, qui sont des problèmes. Let's check how well we know them. Cover up the French and English you've got so far. For each one, I've taken out a few of the letters. I just want you to say the word or perhaps even pause it and write down on a piece of paper or type somewhere else how you think the word should be spelt. So pause, take as long as you need on each one and then check your answer. So what was uh, global warming? So we should unpause now to check it. Le réchauffement de la planète. What's missing to make deforestation? Pause and then unpause. So le déboisement. How do we say nuclear waste? Les déchets nucléaires. What was extinction of species? La destruction d'espèces. The destruction of the ozone layer. La destruction de la couche d'ozone. Pollution, nice and easy one. La pollution. We could add de l'air and so on. Acid rain. Les pluies acides. So pause to work out overfishing. La surpêche, drought. I'll say this one now, see if that helps with the spelling. La sécheresse. So it's about like this. Overpopulation, think about overfishing, the word that comes at the start. La surpopulation. Super. Okay, so hopefully we're getting more and more familiar with those problems. We'll see them again in a moment, but let's just check a couple of others based on a whole sentence. We're going to finish these sentences with some different environmental problems. So, c'est à cause des voitures qu'il y a trop de something. So, let's work out what that means. So, pause and take some time to work out what that means so far, and then what might be missing after, and then unpause when you need some help. So hopefully we know that C means it is. And then voiture from our transport topic means cars. A cause de is something that often causes problem with pronunciation, uh, translation here. We know normally parce que or car means because. But when you want to say because of, they don't say parce que de or car de. They never say that. So of in French is de. It's become de here because of the plural. But they never ever use parce que before it. To say because of something, it's always à cause de, the cause of. Okay, so it's because of cars that il y a means there is good trop de too much something. So what could go after that? What problem? So it could be pollution there. Yeah, it's because of cars that there is too much pollution. Okay, pause to have a think about this one. So from my previous translation, we should know this means because of packaging, that it's because of packaging that there is too much. So this could be déchet. Instead of déchet nucléaire, we're just using déchet here. Next one, have a think about what the problem is because of la construction de maison. Okay, so because we are constructing maison or houses, that's going to cause destruction d'espèces because we're knocking, to earth, knocking down habitats to make new housing estates across the world. C'est à cause d'un certain sport, il y a une... Let's have a think about this one, you might be finding it a bit harder. What certain sport, you might not necessarily consider this a sport, but there is a sport that is happening um, and it's not just the sport that's causing it. Um, what problem could it be causing? 
So it is overfishing sur pêche. Obviously, it's not just a sport, but sporting fishing is also causing it. Okay, and finally, c'est à cause du nombre de gamins. So gamin is another word for kids. Pause. Have a think about what problem is because of le nombre de gamins. So it's because of the number of children that there is overpopulation. That's all. That's what some people think. Okay. We've looked at les problèmes. Now let's look at les solutions. Okay. Before we look at les solutions, we're going to look at how we could put it into a sentence and also how you could answer a question. So it's really important that we are using some of these structures in our exams, not just in this topic. And obviously I'm using the word exam. We don't know what the assessment yet, unfortunately, is going to look like. But we know obviously you are going to have to do some sort of writing. So if you were asked in your speaking or writing, because our speaking exam, we've been told, is still happening at the moment. Qu'est-ce qu'on pourrait faire pour éviter les problèmes? There might be a bit of vocabulary here that is new or we've forgotten that we are going to cause some issues. So let's have a look at this. Qu'est-ce que, what, can one or you, something, hopefully we know that faire means do, pour éviter les problèmes. What, something, we, something, do, to something problems. Well, logically, if I'm, I don't want to cause problems when I'm talking about uh, environment, I want to be helping or stopping problems, that sort of idea. So it means what could we do to avoid the problems? Éviter is to avoid. We did that when we did uh, the healthy living topic, talking about avoiding certain foods. And pour is a higher level construction. It's uh, the infinitive. We have seen this before when we did some suggestions in another topic, but perhaps we've forgotten. So what could we do to avoid the problems? And if I was answering this question, the best thing to do is to take parts of the question to construct my answer. So in order to avoid the problems, we could. I'm going to take those from the question. So pour éviter les problèmes, on pourrait. And then for example, we could protect the environment, just there as an example. To avoid, to avoid the problems, we could protect the environment. Now this pour éviter here is important, as is the on pour -e. So I want you to make a note of these two constructions, please, in your book or wherever you're working. Whenever we have pour plus the infinitive, and I've mentioned this several times before, it means in order to do something. Now, most often people, they know that éviter, because it has the ER ending, it means to avoid. It has that meaning. But it doesn't always need to be translated as to avoid. And when I want it to mean in order to do something, so in order to stop the pro avoid the problems, we could do this. You've got to have pour here. You cannot just have an infinitive ever on its own. It has to have either a bit before it or something before it, like pour there, for, to make the complete construction. Okay, so in order to, is pour plus the infinitive. So make a note of those two. You can have that one as the example, in order to avoid. Okay, so we should have written that one down. Now, on pour means we could or one could. And it's always followed by the infinitive. So can we write that one down as well? So here's an example. In order to avoid drought, to avoid drought, pour éviter la sécheresse, on pourrait, we could, and then help countries in um, development or that sort of thing, whatever it is. We're going to look at some solutions in a moment. If you are higher tier, we should definitely be aiming to use this on pourrait to help get in the, at the tense of conditional. If you are foundation tier, then it's okay to be using a construction like il faut. So, pour éviter la sécheresse, il faut, whatever this solution is, to avoid drought, it's necessary, or you must. We've done this before when we did um, telling people, like, you must eat, drink, uh, two or three litres a day, whatever it is, okay? You could also use on peu, we can. So, in order to avoid drought, we can, whatever it is. So, all three of these are constructions we could use, and they use in different context. We definitely need to recognise these two in our reading and listening. So make a note of those and then we'll look at the solutions. Okay, so we, you're going to make two columns in your book. Here we've got the things we want to avoid, the problems. Pour éviter 
and then the different problems. You have written them down before in today's lesson, but writing them again is going to help us stick them in our heads. And this time they're going to go next to a solution. So in this column, we write the problem. And in this column, we've got lots of solutions muddled up. So what you're going to do is have a think about which of these would match with the most likely problem. Six of them, as I've written here, are not solutions. There are six of them that actually cause more problems. So you don't want to write those down. So if I was looking at these, for example, polluer looks a bit like pollute, and then that is the air. So if I want to avoid polluer in order to avoid global warming, it is necessary to pollute the air. That obviously wouldn't make any sense. So I'm going to ignore that one because it's a negative. It's not a solution. If I then came to the next one, voyager, to travel on vélo, by bike. Well, if I travel by bike, I'm therefore going to cause less pollution. You could also therefore argue it will cause less of the destruction of the ozone layer or even less global warming. So some of them will match with a few, but as long as you put one with each problem. Okay, so a full sentence we'll be making afterwards could be something like pour éviter la pollution, il faut voyager en vélo. Okay, so two columns, one for the problems, one for the solutions, six of them will not need to be written down because they're not solutions and all, all of them go with at least one of them, but they could go with more. Okay, so pause and take as long as you need this and we'll take you the most time. Right, so let's have a look first of all at the six that were not solutions. So we've got détruire les forêts, destroy forests. And as I go through this, if there was anything you didn't know before today, make sure you write down the English next to it. And of the ones that are negatives, just make a little note of any that we're not familiar to. Utiliser la voiture, use the car. Avoir trop d'enfants, have too many children. Polluer la mer, pollute the sea. Polluer l'air, pollute the air. Gaspiller l'eau, to waste water. These in particular would be good verbs to write down because we're going to use them shortly and we haven't done them before today. Let's just go then in no particular order over where you might have put some of these solutions. So I've colour coded them. So by reusing plastic bags, we might reduce global warming because of less rubbish and so on, things being burnt, um, but that could also be linked to pollution. By helping African countries, so in order to avoid overfishing, we could help African countries so they don't overfish in all of their waters. Protéger la mer means protect the sea. Recycler plus, recycle more. Protéger les animaux, protect the animals, that really can only go with one. Uh, sauver la planète, save the planet. Utiliser énergie solaire, use solar energy. Utiliser les transports publics, use public transport. Voyager en vélo, so I've coloured that both to show that it could go with both. It would reduce pollution, reduce that. Like we said, it might reduce this too. So there's several that can go with a few, so don't worry if yours is different to mine. Protéger la terre, protect the earth and protéger les forêts, protect forests. Okay, so the important thing is that you have all of those solutions written down next to at least one of them in the French and the English if you are not familiar with words like la terre. So let's now put those together. You're going to write three examples and then one of your own of things we can avoid. So in order to avoid pollution, it is necessary or you could travel by bike or use the bike. I'd like you to write that sentence in French now. I'll say the English again. In order to avoid pollution, you must, or it is necessary, or you could, or you can, you can any construction you want there, like I showed you before, use the bike or travel by bike. So pause and write that down. Okay, so you should have written your answer down now, so I'd like you to check it in a different colour and correct in a different colour. So we should have something like, pour éviter la pollution, that should be the same for all of us, in order to avoid pollution, on pourrait, or you might have said, il faut, or on peut, utiliser le vélo, or voyager en vélo, travel by bike. That means use the bike, voyager en vélo, travel by bike. 
Next, in order to avoid extinction of species, it is necessary to protect animals, to help animals, to help a charity organisation. You pick something that would make sense there. OK, so you should be ready to check your sentence now. So pour éviter la destruction d'espèces, to avoid the destruction of species, we should all have that. Then either on pourrait or il faut again, you could have something like protect animals, aider les animaux, aider une organisation caritative, help a charity organisation. We learned that phrase when we learned, talked about volunteer work. OK, and finally, in order to avoid drought, it is necessary to save water. Have a go at that one. And then check your answer. So hopefully we have pour éviter la sécheresse, on pourrait ou il faut conserver l'eau. Right now I'd like you to write one of your own. So in order to avoid a particular problem, we could or it is necessary to. You pick your solution. So pause and write that down. Okay. So I'll check those when you submit your work. We're now just going to quickly look at some negatives. So instead of saying in order to avoid drought, we could do something, it might be necessary or a different construction to increase our range in our writing to use a negative and say something like in order to avoid drought, we must not do something. So we're either going to use il ne faut pas and make that il faut negative. So for example, you must not pollute the air. Or instead of you could, we're going to need to use you shouldn't. So you shouldn't. On ne devrait pas. So you shouldn't waste water, for example. So what I'd like you to do is write those constructions down. Il ne faut pas means you must not. On ne devrait pas means you should not. You can write the examples if you'd like, but you don't need to. Right, so once you're ready, let's look at this in context. So there's our constructions again. You're now going to write three to four sentences using the negatives, these here, and some of our solutions or the non-solutions again. So for example, if I wanted to say, in order to avoid global warming, you must not pollute the air, I would say, pour éviter le réchauffement de la planète, il ne faut pas polluer l'air. Or I could say something like, um, to avoid... Uh, I could use global warming again and use a different phrase. Pour éviter le réchauffement de la planète, on, uh, on ne devrait pas utiliser la voiture. Or on ne devrait pas trop utiliser la voiture. So to avoid global warming, you should not use the car too much. And I included that trop there. So write three to four sentences where you are saying to avoid something, you must not do something or you should not do something. OK, so pause and then continue when we're ready. OK, we're now going to see all of that that we've been looking at summarised in a reading with a little extra vocabulary, but most things we should be able to work out by context or cognates. The only thing that is new here is this. It is not pronounced bio. It is unfortunately pronounced bio, but a bit more French, so bio. It means organic. So here I'm talking about agriculture bio, talking about organic farming, organic products there, okay? What I'd like you to do is to skim read this and I'll make the text available if you want to highlight it or write over it or anything like that. You can download it below the video. And I just want you to go over the text. You could translate it word for word if you wanted to, just to check you understand the vocabulary from today. But I just want you to get a general gist and to make sure you've gone over and understood most of what the text is saying. OK, so now you've done that, you should be able to have a good go at this activity here. So all you are doing is going to write one to five and then write A, B or C for the correct answer. If you are needing some help with translating and working things out, then continue the video once you've had a little go. And I'm going to go through a bit now. OK, so you should either be a bit stuck and are needing some help or you finished and are ready to go through this. So let's have a look at the first one. Pollution cause, so pollution causes, is it industry, pro, bio produit, uh, organic products or global warming? Well, logically, pollution doesn't cause industry or organic products. It causes global warming. So without even needing to look at the text, really, you can work that one out unless 
you translated that wrong and said pollution is a cause of industry or something like that. But if I was looking up here, I can see in order to stop global warming, you must stop pollution. So therefore, they go hand in hand, those two there. Okay. Il ne faut pas trop something la voiture. So if we were looking at where it says about cars here, it's saying donc, so. And that means it links the previous sentence. Let's have a quick look here. Cars, industry, production of energy, for example, electricity. So there's no, no vocabulary issues there, really. That looks a little bit like produce, gas, cause, pollution of air. So you must something use the car. We know logically we shouldn't use the car so much, so I'm going to guess this means less, and we have done one before. Therefore, the opposite, pollute more, use more industrial filters, change sources, energy of. So I'm going to guess that means of energy. For example, use more energy, solar, solar energy. So we come back to this now. Il ne faut pas trop something. You must not change the car, use the car, and if you're not sure what that verb is. By now, hopefully, you have a good understanding from the text as well that use is the one that makes sense. Solar energy is something for the environment. Logically, if I look at these, if you've forgotten what mauvaise is, okay, ennuyeuse is a feminine spelling of ennuyeux. Hope you remember that's boring. And then we have good. Well, straight away, I'm going to guess that it would be good. Um, but it's off giving me a suggest suggestion here that I should be using it because it's good. So here's just a case of making sure you know what these words mean. Il faut, we know now from today, we've been reminded it means it's necessary to something. So I'm not going to remind you of what that is just yet. Something bio or supermarché. So in the supermarket, there is something organic. Well, I'm not likely to buy an organic car. Fruit and, ve fruit and vegetables. Douche. You can't remember douche. The most logic one here is fruit and vegetables, isn't it? Douche means shower. So again, without even looking at the text, you can sometimes get an idea from logic. So if I jump back up just to check in my answer, it says here buying organic products, supermarket, and it mentions their fruit and vegetables. So I'm confident I got the right one. Finally, number five, on peut acheter aussi des produits. So we can buy, can I buy vert, noir, or rouge? Scanning up here, it says I can buy yeah, produits vert, green products, and it doesn't mention any other colours. And logically, as well, we would call things green if they are environmentally friendly. Okay, this now is more of a higher level reading, but I still want us to all have a go at it, because there's a lot in here from, like the example I just gave, if you were in an exam and you used process of elimination or logic or looking at the words you already know, you can answer more than you realise and not have this mental brain block of, oh my goodness, big long text, words I don't know, there's too much going on here, and some of you just moving on or just guessing without really thinking about it. So first of all, skim read this down here and look at the different options you need to be finding. You're going to write 1 to 7 and you're going to pick A, B or C for each one again. Just see if you can locate where roughly they are in the text and try and have a go at answering without just guessing. And when you are ready to stop and check these, I'll go through it as if I was sitting this in an exam. OK, so let's have a look then. We should have had a little go at this by now. Jamal. Is, has been in Tunis for five years, one year, or three years. So if I'm going to skim read up here, introduce himself, where he lives, talks about being in French lycée, voilà, trois ans, je suis ici. So I can see straight away there are three years. So I don't really need to, I can't see anything about a five or a one. I feel quite confident with that answer. He is worried about, is it his life at school, the environment, or talking to others? So if I carried on from where I last found my last answer, rather than jump, we need to make sure we don't ignore parts of the text. Depuis que j'ai commencé à parler de l'environnement l'année dernière au lycée, je me suis très concerné. So concerné looks like concern. So I'm going to link that here to the worried and presume that the answer is probably therefore in here. And he's talking about lycée, so it might be something to do with school, but I can also see environment. So um, J'ai commencé à parler, and I can see talking. So let's try and narrow this down. So commenced talking of the environment last year in school. Concerned. Okay, so I can see now that's the environment. 
Right, number three, the beaches near Tunis are something. So I need to skim read now to find the word beach, which I know, hopefully we know by now is La Plage. And I might then, within that sentence or structures, need to look for the word poisson. If you cannot remember far away or dirty, then hopefully you would need to work them out from the context here. So I'm going to presume I don't know it. So looking over here, then I can see something about being in Paris before. So we need to know our time constructions, because knowing that avant means before, I something Paris, gives me that real clue that he used to be in Paris. Problems exist also, but different. So there are different environmental problems in Paris compared to Tunis. So he loves his new town. So n'est pas, I know this means it's not something from beach. Okay, so here we have beach. And I know that his town is not something from the beach. So logically, if I'm talking about town and his life, sorry, his life is not something from the beach. I can start to logically guess now, especially that there are things here, this word here, that might mean far or it could mean close. So I need to be careful that it's not so close to the beach or not so far. So something about the distance there. Unfortunately, it's very something. People, hmm, some fish, no, not familiar. It's a rubbish. Oh, I know this means familiar on the lesson, earth or ground. Okay, so the beach is very something. People have something to do with rubbish on the ground. So nothing there, especially as I read on, it's moving on to talk about plastic bags. It's not talking about beach, this part here. It's talking about maybe that bit there. Haven't seen fish anywhere in that section, so I'm going to ignore full of fish. So it's either that the beaches are far away or dirty. So this word has caused me problems here, sal and noir. If people are throwing rubbish on the ground, I'm going to make a logical guess that that means they are dirty, and that sal means dirty. And I think it makes more sense to say it's not far from the beach, because Paris in comparison is nowhere near beaches, um, I don't know anything about Tunis, so therefore I'm going to assume that it's, he's saying it's different. Paris is far from the beach, whereas Tunis is not. So the beaches near Tunis are not far away, not full of fish, therefore they are dirty. So that hopefully you can see, although it took me a little while, although you need to be patient, is an example of in your assessment or exam, if you don't know and you're looking at all, you've got examples here, you can go back and forth, right, can I see this word anywhere? Can I see this word anywhere? What can I use about logic? What do I know about this? Okay, so putting all the pieces together. It takes time, but I was able to work that out, basing my knowledge on what I thought maybe a foundation people would know or foundation to hire, okay? Right, the main problem is, is it plastic bags, animals or plants? Logically, if we're talking about the environment, animals and plants don't tend to cause environmental problems, especially not plants. Um, so problem is, got matière, sac, pl plastic bags, not sure about this part here, finish in the sea, Dis that looks a bit like maybe destroyed it with this habitats of anim marine animals and also plants. So I think it's saying something about plastic bags affecting animals and plants. So therefore, main problem is plastic bags. OK, other big issue Jamel has noticed is chemicals, street truck crime or naturists. Now, if you know what a naturist is, then that sh that's been put in there to throw you off. I'm going to presume. A naturist is somebody who likes to be nude. Um, and also, if we're talking about the environment, my logical guess here is that it's less likely to be about street crime because this seems to be a topic about the environment because that's what he is concerned about. But obviously, we need to be sure. But that's what my initial thinking is. Other problem, also, something about education on... This looks like it could mean chemical chemical products, something. People use things that are dangerous, not something health, but also for environments. Maybe that means not only for health, but also environment. And it that pollutes water of rivers, river water. Okay, um, so I can't see anything there about street crime, naturists, 
So I'm more convinced now that it's chemicals. I feel quite confident about my answer now. Okay, young people pollute by. So I want to find where it talks about young people in the text. Um, and do is it going to mention anything about dishy, fumy, or driving mopeds? And I'm not sure what that is, but let's have a look over here then. So pollution, vehicles, motor vehicles, negative, controlled, not controlled. Comparison here to France, for example. Right, this is where it says young people, something, mobilet. Well, it's talking about motor vehicles and then young people. It does say in fuminwa. So I know fumi is to smoke, but this is a noun, a something to do with black, black smoke. Well, that to me, now logically, you're talking about vehicles, that looks a bit like. Um, so like it could be a little mobile vehicle or something emitting a black smoke so that mean that's how they would pollute so i think therefore driving mopeds paris in comparison is so it's not something in paris parfait hmm, not sure about that one uh it's just that the problems negative mem right i'm not sure about this word mem but earlier on, he did talk about Paris and said them about being different. Um, he hasn't mentioned about beautiful. I know that word is belle. Um, Paris in comparison. Well, I know Paris wouldn't be perfect. It has, you know, it's, a, it's an inner city. It's going to have environmental problems, but it's going to be different because it's not by the sea and so on. So logically, it's that and that kind of there confirms it to me. Okay, so just by looking at... Um, one or two bits that I understand from the text that are just cognates from the knowledge that we should have by now and the, looking at the questions you hopefully can work out a lot more than you think you can okay obviously if we know things like mem means same son means are then that's going to help us because I know it, it's saying it's just that the problems are not the same and that straight away would tell me different rather than making me rather than me making all of these roundabout guesses. So vocabulary is really important there. Okay, right, you can thank Mr. Cullerton because he sent me this ridiculous meme. <laughs> We're now gonna do a little bit of grammar time, get away from that vocabulary to just help us with building our grammar to do with the environment. So what I want you to do is we see the they form a lot in reading and we need to be familiar with it even if you're not constructing it as um, foundation. Okay, so what I want you to do is put these here to pollute, to protect, to save, to help, to save in a different kind of way rather than conserve and to waste into the they form. So have a think now, what does the they form always end in with verbs? If you're not sure, go back to your grammar book or maybe Google French present tense ER verbs because these are all ER. So if we've paused and had a good look, then we should have found that it ends in an ENT. So I'm going to take off those first two letters. Uh, sorry, the last two letters. So it no longer means to pollute. And I add ENT. So if I put they before it or young people before it, I've now got the right spelling for they pollute. So have a go at the others, pause and turn the other verbs into the they form. And then I'm pause. So we should have protège, conserve, aide, sauve, gaspille. And you'll notice that ENT on the end is not being pronounced. It just pollue, same as the he, she form. Let's have a quick go at putting just three into the we form. So what do we verbs end in? So maybe you remembered from memory or maybe you've just paused and gone to check, but they end in ONS. So same thing, I'm going to get rid of the part that means two and I want to add on the we end. So have a go at those and then let's check them. Okay, so we should have aidons, utilisons. And I didn't remind you, I was wondering, just how, wondering how many of you might remember that when we add ONS to verbs like manger, voyager, that G, whenever it has an O straight after, makes a G sound instead of a J sound. So if I did not keep the E there, I would then say to say we travel would be nous voyagons. 
and they have to keep the same sound with the verb. So I keep the E there to make it nous voyageons. Okay, just to finish then, let's recap some vocabulary from today. Fill in the blanks here. So, pour éviter le déboisement, on pourrait something forêt. What words are missing to make this mean in order to avoid deforestation, we could. What could be missing there? So pause and write down what you think could be missing. So it's protect the forest. You might have something else, but as long as it makes sense. Okay, what does this mean and what is missing? So go back over the lesson, pause, work out what could be missing here. So it means in order to avoid the destruction of species, we could protect animals. So go back over the vocabulary from today to check what this means and work out what's missing there. Hopefully did that one quite easily. And you've unpaused now because we can see the pattern above. In order to avoid drought, we could save water. What is missing here? So pause and check your answer. So in order to avoid acid rain, we could protect the sea or you could have put il faut there. It's necessary to protect the sea. And then what is missing here? So you should have written your answer down now and unpause. So in order to avoid overpopulation, we could. Now you might have a different solution. It could be something like help African countries in educating them and that sort of thing. Okay, so now we've had a, we've grown our vocabulary of environmental problems. We've seen them in several contexts. And also we've had a go at either the conditional or the il faut at suggesting solutions to go with those. What I want you to do is now is make sure that you submit your work so I can see the different sentences you wrote and how you got on today. If you want a bit of extra practice on grammar and building up vocabulary to do with the environment, you could also do this as an extra little task. Um, there are some nouns here to do with the environment, so recycling, waste and so on. What you need to do then is find the verb equivalents. You could either use a dictionary or something like word reference online but have a go at finding what these mean and then the equivalent verb of them. So like what is to pollute, what is to destroy and so on. Okay, and then you can send them to me to check. Well done, New 11, and I will see you next Monday.